So in this video, we're going to explore a set of very fundamental and important relations that will be useful for calculating properties of all kinds of chemical systems. We'll start with a set of fundamental relationships um, and going back to the fundamental equation that we derived in an earlier video for internal energy, uh, we can derive similar relationships now for each of our important four thermodynamic uh, variables, internal energy, enthalpy, Gibbs energy, and the Helmholtz energy. Um, so let's go ahead and start with enthalpy. Uh, we know the definition of enthalpy. Uh, we talked about that earlier in a previous video. H is equal to U plus PV. Um, and if we then make the substitution of our fundamental equation into the um, expression for um, du in relationship to enthalpy. We have this expression here um, and for of course the PV we're differentiating that. Um, now if we expand the dPV uh, we get PDV plus VDP um, and if we look carefully we'll note of course that the PDV terms cancel out and we're left with a two-term relationship dH is equal to TDS plus VDP. We can do similar kinds of derivations based on the definitions of the Gibbs energy and the Helmholtz energy to get these two relationships here. I encourage you to try this on your own to make sure you can derive these two expressions for dA and dG. Uh, so now we have four major equations for our four major thermodynamic properties. We have the fundamental equation for internal energy that allows us to express internal energy changes in terms of volume changes and entropy changes, of course. Um, we have this fundamental relationship for um, enthalpy that allows us to determine changes in enthalpy based on entropy and pressure. And then we have the fundamental relationship for the Helmholtz energy where we're talking about temperature and volume changes. And finally, the one that we're probably going to be using most through the rest of this uh, semester, uh, the relationship for the Gibbs energy, which expresses changes in terms of temperature and pressure. All right, so now we have these four thermodynamic properties. So now we'll go back to the fundamental equation for internal energy, which expresses changes in terms of volume and entropy. Um, and we know going back to some fundamental relationships, basic mathematical relationships that we discussed earlier, um, we know that if we can express internal energy changes in terms of volume and entropy, that we can also write that in terms of the partial derivatives. So in this particular expression here, since we are basing our changes on volume, and entropy, that means that if we want to go back to the basic mathematics, we have a partial derivative which expresses the rate of change of internal energy with respect to volume, holding entropy constant, and then we have a similar relationship which gives us internal energy changes with respect to entropy, holding volume constant. Um, so we have this basic mathematical relationship that we write knowing that en en uh, internal energy depends on volume and entropy. So now if we compare these two equations, we can clearly see a relationship and we can now identify uh, specific um, properties associated with these partial derivatives that we can now see, of course, that du dv constant s is equal to um, negative p and du ds at constant v is equal to t. as shown here through this comparison. Now we also know, and we've talked about this before, because internal energy is a function of state, that means um, it is independent of path. And so what that also means mathematically is that if we take second derivatives, the order of differentiation is unimportant. So for example, this first term here, which shows 
the second derivative with respect to entropy and volume. In this particular case, we take the derivative with respect to entropy first and then take the derivative with respect to volume. Um, that's equal to the circumstance of the partial derivative where we take the second derivative with respect to volume first and then with entropy. Again, because you use a function of state, the order differentiation is not important. Now, this may seem to be a trivial mathematical detail, but it's going to give us a relationship, as you'll see in a few moments, um, that is going to be critical for some future calculations. So let's take a look at the second derivative on the left. Here we're talking about taking it with respect to entropy first and then with respect to volume after that. So we can do a direct comparison with our relationship where we have the first derivative with respect to entropy. Remember, we're doing that first. And so now we're going to take the derivative of that with respect to volume. Alright, so we now have this first the derivative with respect to entropy and then the derivative with respect to volume and we continue with that that means that we're going to take the derivative then of temperature which is on the right side of our equation here with respect to volume I hope you can see that alright now we can do the same thing with the other side of the equation. Um, and there we're taking the derivative with respect to volume first and then with respect to entropy. So that means we end up taking the derivative of negative p with respect to entropy. Now here's a critical thing, of course, these two partial derivatives, second derivatives, are equal to each other because u is a function of state. So that means that these first derivatives with respect to temperature and pressure that we see here are also equal to each other. And so based on this um, concept that u is a function of state and the order of differentiation is unimportant, we've derived an important relationship between these two partial derivatives here um, with temperature and pressure. Now again, you're, you're asking yourself, well, what purpose does this serve? Uh, we'll, we'll see in a few moments how it applies directly to something that we've actually already done. Now, we can do this thing for actually all four of our important thermodynamic functions. We've just derived in a relationship based on internal energy. We can do the same thing with enthalpy. Um, and we go back to the first um, discussion earlier in this video where we derived a fundamental relationship for enthalpy changes in terms of of entropy and pressure. So because it's again in terms of entropy and pressure, we can write partial derivatives with respect to entropy and pressure, and then we can associate, just as we did before, those partial derivatives with um, temperature and volume respectively. So now we have this relationship here which shows enthalpy changes with respect to entropy. That partial derivative is equal to temperature and the um, partial derivative with respect to pressure is equal to volume. All right. Now, as before, we know that the order of differentiation is unimportant because enthalpy is also a function of state, um, so it doesn't matter whether we take the derivative with respect to pressure or entropy first, so those two are equal to each other. So therefore, that means, just as before, when we do a comparison here, with these relationships. We can take the appropriate derivatives of the temperature and volume variables. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of temperature with respect to pressure and then we're going to take the derivative of volume with respect to entropy and those two must be equal to each other so we now have another relationship based on the fundamental equation for enthalpy. So now we have two relationships, one based on internal energy and one based on enthalpy. So now, um, we've, as I just said, we've done the um, uh, derivation for internal energy and enthalpy. We can go for, uh, of course, Helmholtz and Gibbs. Um, you should go ahead and prove to yourself um, that we can derive these relationships using the same techniques um, that we derive for um, internal energy and, and enthalpy. 
Um, so we have these four very important relations. They're called the Maxwell relations. And as you're going to find in a few moments, they are incredibly useful for deriving and calculating changes in, in various properties of uh, physical and chemical systems. Um, so let's look at a specific example, one we've talked about extensively already, and that is the internal pressure. Um, you may recall, of course, that internal pressure is equal to this derivative du dv constant t, which we said, of course, was equal to zero for an ideal gas, uh, because this particular derivative is related to interactions. An ideal gas has no interaction, so that's equal to zero. Well, we can derive a simple expression for du dv constant t. Um, if we just start going back to our fundamental relationship for du, it's equal to TDS minus PDV. And since we're interested in du dv, um, strangely enough, it may seem to you, it, it's almost like algebra, we simply divide through our equation by dv, so we get du dv um, is equal to t times ds dv uh, minus p times dv dv, and you can see the relationship there uh, that we have. So all we've done is we've started with, with our fundamental relationship and divided each term through by dv to get those specific relationships. Now, of course, dv dv, the derivative of v with respect to v is just equal to 1, um, and so now we have um, this simple relationship here uh, where we have, of course, assumed that our partial derivative, not assumed, but we've, we've actually eliminated that partial derivative because of d is equal to 1. So we have this simple relationship for internal pressure, temperature times ds dv at constant t minus p. Um, so but, of course, entropy is not something we measure directly in the laboratory. Uh, we measure things like pressure and volume and temperature and, and such in the laboratory. Um, so this in itself is not necessarily a straightforward relation. However, if we go back to our list of partial derivatives on the previous slide, we'll note there is partial derivative, there is a Maxwell relationship that tells us that ds dv at constant t is actually equal to dp dt, a constant v. And if we make that substitution, we now have this relationship um, for the internal pressure, which we have used many times throughout the semester. We didn't derive it. We just said going back that um, internal pressure was equal to this, and we use this to show that, for example, uh, mathematically, that the internal pressure of an ideal gas was equal to zero. We've used it to derive the internal pressure for a van der Waals gas. We've actually used it several times to relate internal pressure and calculate internal pressure and internal energy changes in various kinds of systems. So now you can see where we got it. We use these very use, this very useful Maxwell relation to derive this particular expression that now allows us to do specific calculations in physical and chemical systems. So we will be using many expressions like this throughout the rest of the semester to do various calculations, um, as you will see in uh, future videos. So with apologies to Tears for Fears, this ends this particular video. Um, stay tuned for the next.